the joy of learning biology right here online for you and me. Explore the wonder with BioClass. BioClass. Item 1. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease caused by a faulty ion channel protein, leading to thick mucus that blocks ducts and tubes lined with epithelium. In the pancreas, this blocks the release of digestive enzymes. A researcher is studying how the resulting nutrient malabsorption affects cellular respiration in intestinal epithelial cells. Table. Analysis of intestinal epithelial cells in a CF model. Analyze the different parameters. Task. Part A. Analyze the sequence of events, from the faulty protein to the thick mucus, and finally to the reduced ATP output in the intestinal epithelial cells, explaining the role of glucose and pyruvate dehydrogenase. Part B. Justify a nutritional supplement strategy that could bypass the blocked digestive enzymes and provide substrates to support the aerobic respiration of the gut epithelium. Part A. We have been told to analyze the sequence of events from the faulty protein. Cystic fibrosis is caused by a faulty CFTR ion channel in the epithelial cell membranes. Normally, this channel allows chloride ions to move out of the cell into the duct. Sodium ions and water then follow to keep the mucus layer moist and thin. When the CFTR channel is faulty, chloride cannot leave the cell, so less sodium and water move into the mucus. This makes the mucus thick and sticky. The thick mucus blocks the pancreatic ducts, preventing digestive enzymes like amylase, protease, and lipase from reaching the small intestine. Without these enzymes, starch, proteins, and fats are not properly broken down into smaller molecules such as glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids. As a result, only about 30% of glucose is absorbed instead of 95%. With less glucose available inside intestinal cells, glycolysis slows down, producing less pyruvate, which is the key fuel entering the next stage of respiration. The enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase, which converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA for the Krebs cycle, becomes less active because of the reduced pyruvate supply. With less acetyl-CoA, the Krebs cycle turns more slowly, producing fewer electron carriers for the electron transport chain. Consequently, fewer electrons flow through the chain, less oxygen is reduced, and less ATP is produced by oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria. The intestinal cells, therefore, suffer from low energy output and reduced metabolic activity. Part B. Use of pre-digested or easily absorbable nutrients, glucose or glucose polymers, ready for absorption, no enzymes needed, hydrolyzed proteins, amino acids, and small peptides. Use medium-chain triglycerides or pre-digested lipids, which are absorbed without pancreatic lipase. Add pancreatic enzyme capsules with meals to improve digestion. Vitamins like vitamin B1, thiamine, and other B-complex vitamins support pyruvate dehydrogenase activity. Replace fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K lost through fat malabsorption. These supplements restore nutrient absorption, provide substrates for glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, and increase ATP production in the gut epithelial cells. Item 2. In Karamoja, farmers are testing sorghum and amaranthus for drought resistance. During prolonged dry spells, sorghum stays green and continues growing, while amaranthus wilts rapidly and shows reduced leaf area. Scientists recorded data on leaf anatomy, chloroplast density, stomatal behavior, and water content of both plants under the same conditions. When attempting such an item, we are going to use the following information. Xerophytic adaptations, guard cell control, water stress, chloroplast density, stomatal regulation, and C4 pathway advantage. We are restricted to the information provided in the scenario and the data. Task. Using the information provided, Part A. Explain the physiological reasons why sorghum survives better than amaranthus under drought. Part B. 
Propose Strategies to Enhance Drought Resistance of Amaranthus in Karamoja. Part A. Leaf Structure Reduces Water Loss. Sorghum has narrow leaves with a thick cuticle. Amaranthus has broad leaves with a thin cuticle. Narrow shape plus thick cuticle lowers the leaf surface exposed and slows water loss by reducing transpiration. Smaller stomatal openings limit evaporation. Sorghum's average stomatal opening is 2 micrometers. Amaranthus is 4.5 micrometers. Smaller openings let less water vapor escape, so sorghum keeps more water during dry spells. Higher leaf water content shows better water retention. Measured leaf water content. Sorghum 80% versus amaranthus 55%. This confirms sorghum loses less water and maintains cell turgor, which keeps leaves green and cells functioning. The photosynthetic pathway improves water use efficiency. Sorghum is C4, amaranthus is C3. C4 physiology concentrates carbon dioxide around the enzyme rubisco, so stomata do not need to open as wide or as long to get carbon dioxide gas. That gives much better water use efficiency and less photorespiration in hot, dry conditions. Higher chloroplast number supports sustained photosynthesis. Chloroplasts per mesophyll cell, sorghum 60 versus amaranthus 38. More chloroplasts and C4 anatomy allow sorghum to maintain higher carbon fixation per leaf area even when stomata are partly closed, helping it continue growth during drought. Mulching and soil moisture conservation. Mulch reduces evaporation from soil, keeping roots supplied longer. Planting time and spacing sow at times with some soil moisture and use wider spacing to reduce competition for water. Improving soil organic matter, compost, or manure increases the soil's water-holding capacity. Selection or breeding of xerophytic leaf traits with narrower leaves and thicker cuticles to reduce transpiration use plants with smaller or fewer stomata so leaves lose less water. Breed or interbreed traits that raise with high chloroplast number. Treatment with mild abscisic acid triggers earlier stomatal control and osmotic adjustments, so seedlings tolerate drought better. Item 3. During a heat wave, a marathon runner, David, stops sweating and becomes confused and agitated. His core body temperature is 40.5 degrees Celsius. He is diagnosed with heat stroke. Meanwhile, his teammate Lisa, who drank a balanced electrolyte solution throughout the race, finished strongly with a core temperature of 38.5 degrees Celsius. David's urine is very concentrated and dark yellow. Table Thermoregulatory and osmoregulatory responses. Analyze the data in the table. Look out for the variations in the data provided between the normal and David's parameters. Task. Part A. Explain the homeostatic failure in David's case. Describe how the hypothalamus normally regulates temperature and how osmoregulation is linked to this process during dehydration. Part B. Justify the emergency treatment for David and a behavioral strategy to prevent recurrence. The hypothalamus detects changes in body temperature using central and skin thermoreceptors. When the temperature rises, it triggers sweating, evaporative cooling, and vasodilation of skin blood vessels to lose heat. Normal osmoregulation. When body water decreases, osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus detect high plasma osmolarity and stimulate ADH release. ADH makes the kidneys reabsorb water, conserving it and producing concentrated urine. Dehydration During the race, David lost a lot of water through sweat. His plasma osmolarity rose, urine became concentrated, and ADH increased to conserve water. Reduced blood volume Dehydration, lowered plasma volume, so the body redirected blood to vital organs and reduced skin blood flow. Less blood reached the skin, limiting heat loss. Sweating stopped. With both high ADH and low plasma volume, sweat glands received less stimulation and sweating ceased. The main cooling mechanism was lost. Heat buildup. Without sweating or skin blood flow, 
body heat accumulated, raising core temperature to 40.5 degrees Celsius. At this level, the hypothalamus becomes damaged, causing failure of thermoregulation and complete heat stroke. Part B. Emergency Treatment Rapid cooling, such as immersing in cool water or applying ice packs to the neck, armpits, and groin, quickly lowers core and brain temperature, preventing organ damage. Use of intravenous isotonic saline solution to restore blood volume and skin perfusion, improving cooling and kidney function. Monitor electrolytes and temperature. Check sodium, potassium, and heart rhythm to avoid complications from cooling or fluid shifts. Supportive care. Give oxygen to maintain the airway and transfer to the hospital for further management. Rapid cooling prevents brain injury. Fluids restore lost volume for better heat loss, and monitoring prevents secondary problems. Behavioral strategies to prevent recurrence. Hydrate with electrolyte drinks before and during exercise to replace both water and salts. Acclimatize to heat over one to two weeks to enhance sweat response and plasma volume. Avoid peak heat hours and reduce pace in hot conditions. Wear light breathable clothing and use cooling aids. Recognize early signs of heat stress, dizziness, dark urine, confusion, and stop to cool down. Item 4. A previously healthy young man develops a severe bacterial infection. His innate immune system initially controls it, but the infection persists. Blood tests show normal white blood cell counts, but a specific deficiency in the production of antibodies. This leaves him vulnerable to recurrent infections that most people fight off easily. Table. Immune response analysis. Normal innate T and B cell concentration in blood. However, persistent infections mean there may be a challenge with antibody formation. Task. Part A. Distinguish between the roles of the innate and adaptive immune systems in this case, explaining why the patient can initially control the infection but suffers from recurrences. Part B. Propose strategies that could help protect him from future infections and explain their mechanism. Part A. We are going to distinguish roles and give reasons for recurrent infections. Innate immunity is a fast, nonspecific first line. Data shows phagocytosis by neutrophils, normal. Neutrophils and other innate cells, like macrophages, complement and inflammation, act immediately to engulf and destroy bacteria. Innate effectors work normally. The patient initially reduces bacterial numbers and controls the infection, which explains the early control. Adaptive immunity specific and long-term protection, both humoral and cell-mediated. Adaptive immunity has two major arms, cell-mediated, T-cells, and humoral, B-cells that produce antibodies. Data shows T-cell count, normal, and B-cell count, normal. But antibody levels are very low. That means the cells that make antibodies, B cells and plasma cells, exist, but are not producing normal amounts of antibodies. Causes recurrent infections. Antibodies, for long-term and specific defense against extracellular bacteria, work by neutralization, blocking toxins or bacterial adhesion. Opsonization, coating bacteria so phagocytes recognize and ingest them more efficiently and activating the complement to lyse bacteria or promote inflammation. Because antibody levels are very low, the patient lacks effective humoral defense and immune memory. So once the innate system reduces the infection, the body cannot clear every bacterium or prevent regrowth and cannot mount an efficient secondary response. That is why infections recur even though innate responses and cell counts look normal. Part B. Strategies to protect him from future infections and the mechanism for each. You were supposed to use the information provided in the scenario and the data. Provision of antibodies from donors, artificial passive immunity, and pooled antibodies from healthy donors regularly supply the missing antibodies, IgG and IgA, so pathogens are neutralized, opsonized, and cleared by phagocytes and complement, which reduces infection frequency and severity. Prophylactic, prevention by use of antibiotics for high-risk periods. 
low-dose antibiotics given regularly or at the first sign of illness to lower bacterial load, preventing infections from establishing or becoming severe while humoral immunity is deficient. Careful use of vaccines. Vaccination protects against some pathogens. They stimulate the patient's adaptive system to make antibodies in memory. Treatment of underlying causes. To find out the cause of selective antibody deficiency, common variable immunodeficiency, or another disorder, guides definitive therapy. General preventive measures and monitoring, like good hygiene, prompt treatment of infections, avoiding high-risk exposures, regular medical follow-up, and monitoring of antibody levels. This reduces exposure and ensures early treatment, so infections do not become severe.